Make this bigger. Okay, good evening. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. It's good to have you aboard here. Folks, if you just tuned into our live Facebook from Zoom, uh, Pastor Ralph with another edition of Faith, Family, and Friends. And tonight, a uh, very special guest on. She is the wife of my wife's nephew, Zach Hackman. And uh, we've known each other for a little while, have had some family gatherings. Uh, um, sadly, the last family gathering we had was, of course, uh, Nia's uh, mother-in-law, Kim, my wife's sister, who passed suddenly at a very young age compared to, you know, being older and a heart attack. So God really brought us through all of that. And I think that um, what made me want to ask you to be on our show tonight, everybody's got a story, and that's part of what our theme is, Nia, uh, here at Faith Family and Friends. But I, I had never really heard your testimony. I knew that you were a strong believer. Uh, Zach was uh, taken with your testimony and your, your life. God put you guys together. Maybe at some point, if, if God leads, you can share how the Lord may have done that with you too. But, but just uh, hearing uh, in the background, you sharing your testimony with a family member or somebody. And I thought, man, I want to know about what God's done in this lady's life. And so that sort of... Uh, was the inspiration of having you on here tonight. So I'm glad that you made time. I know you're very busy with your blended family of uh, six kids. Yes, that's, that's, that's incredible. Some special needs kids and you both work. Uh, that's another question that maybe if we get to, but I really want to get to the crux of, of, of how that, uh, and maybe, maybe, I, maybe we'll have both you and Zach on and how do you do it kind of interview. A lot of people that we have on, there's so much to talk about, but people are busy. Their attention spans are, are not what they used to be, and I'll include myself. And it's really good to break that up. So there's a lot that, that I'm sure you could share about that. But tonight, if we could just focus on um, your testimony, how, where you grew up, how you grew up, and how you found Christ, because I think it's an, an amazing story about how the Lord just, uh, you're one of his jewels in his crown. And I just want to commend you for, for following him in the way that you have. Yeah, so I was born in India, and um, I, uh, since I'm a girl, I was not accepted mm -hmm. by my parents. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of discrimination that happens in India, and especially in my family. Mm -hmm. So I went through a lot of emotional abuse. My brother himself, like I had, a, I have a brother, a younger brother. So since the time I remember, he would just beat me horribly to the extent of like I would have wounds all over and with a belt or anything. My dad also beat me once. My totally mom provoked because you just yeah. Wow. And it, anything and he is he is like four or five years younger than me. So mm -hmm. we were very young age, but he was so privileged. So he had that right, and my mother would beat me and. For, for them, I was just a uh, hate, burden, shame because I was a girl. Mm. So the good thing that happened that I grew up in convent schools, a Catholic school. Okay. So even in India, they have missionaries and they set up a Catholic school. So I think the seed was somewhere planted there. Okay. But definitely our family was very, very Hindu. So I was a Hindu. Mm -hmm very religious Hindu. My dad is still like a very strong Hindu in India. Mm. So anyways, uh, so after all of these abuse for like so many years, a boy comes to my life and I think that I found my charming prince. And yeah. yes, uh, so I married him. Mm. Uh, we came to America. That is how we moved to America. Oh, uh, we because we we got married. He was he was my ex husband, mm -hmm. but the amount of abuse that I suffered from him was like crazy. Like he, oh, he abused me like anything. He was very like um, he had many affairs, mm -hmm. and so the cycle never ended for me. Mm -hmm. So. Three and a half years ago, what happened was I was working at Gordon Food Services mm -hmm. and uh, I found out his another affair. Mm -hmm. uh, like a, uh, And I found out that he was even having an apartment. So this was not new to me. It, it has happened so many times mm -hmm. because we had we have two daughters. Mm -hmm. So uh, so um, 
I was still like, I want you to just get out of it. He even said that I'm a sex addict or whatever. But anyways, um, at Gordon Food Services, they have this program, which is known as like Cure Partner, where, the, where I got to meet a clergy. Mm -hmm. I spent one hour with him and I felt like I met God. Wow. So, so we were trying to save my marriage because I did not tell him the entire truth. I said that this was the first affair. But one day I took the courage and I told him this is not the first time. It has happened many times. And so what he did was he connected me to a female partner so that I can open up more and I can talk about these issues. You're more free too, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we just met once, mm -hmm. me and the female partner. That was it. Then what happened, I, my husband or my ex-husband served me the divorce papers. Mm -hmm. Like he, so the divorce, because I was, I told him very clearly that this needs to stop. Mm -hmm. Now, the divorce means for me is that I would have to go back to India because I am not an American citizen. I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I'm, I, I, he was an Indian citizen too. I'm an Indian citizen too, but that would mean that because we were living on, I was on as a dependent on him. Mm -hmm. So I had to go back. Now my job did not sponsor me visa. So I, I was left with, I had to leave this job to find a job that will sponsor me that mm -hmm. so that I can stay in the States. Mm -hmm. So my condition was, and that uh, my girls were started to like go back and forth every week so my condition was that I he wanted to throw me out of the house also but luckily my attorney saved that for me so that I can have some time I had absolute no help from my parents mm. because divorce they do not understand they do not like I clearly asked my like my dad clearly said to me let him have another affair it's okay wow <laughs> That's, so that's yeah so he was okay like my so it was it was like they were very clear that there are only two choices either I come back to India and live with them mm -hmm. but I will have to leave my daughters here and well, my no. yeah so they could not understand my love for my daughters yeah. and they could understand or I need to live with my husband like there's no third choice mm -hmm. so um so here I was I was a I had no support from my family, all my Indian friends. Like I had at least hundred Hindu friends in this town. Mm -hmm. Not a single person helped me. The moment they hear about divorce, they yeah. just fly away. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so I was jobless. I was, uh, I did not know when I have, to, I was scared because I had very few months left. The window was like, three or four months to find another job yeah, wow. so yeah it was a very scary situation so one day I was lying down uh, I woke up and I also went through a lot of like uh, sexual abuse mm -hmm. so when I woke up I could not even move out of my bed wow. I was like stuck on my bed so traumatic I, right traumatic very yeah. traumatic mm -hmm. like I do not know I could see the curtains but I could not even I knew that if somebody showed me the light, I would be able to, but I could not. Mm. Uh, right there, I started texting my Hindu friends. Nobody responded. Somehow it came to my mind that I should text that lady mm. from Gordon Food Service. I texted her. I called her. Or she, oh, she, she took my phone and she said, she took my address. She said, I will be there in 10 minutes. Oh, wow. That was very weird to me. And one of, and another person who was my neighbor, she came too. So even just hearing their uh, voice that they're coming, I could gather the energy to come. Now, when I met this lady, she was very clear to me that I need to go to church. Hmm. I kept on saying, no, I need to go to temple because, <laughs> yeah. because of the conflict. I was like, this is like 35 years I have worshipped. I have been going to temple. It's Hindu idols and it is... So it was three three times that I said no. And the third time she said to me that uh, you cannot find Christ in the temple. You can find Christ only in the church. And that words were like, okay, yes, yes. So then um, 
I took the, we made a plan that I would bring my girls to the church. So it was Calvary Church. It is on East Pulse Line. It's a very big church here. Mm -hmm. I went there. I was completely lost, but there were so many people. I just <laughs> kept on following her. <laughs> and church was so different from temple. Like it's, yeah, sure. it was very different. Can and I ask you this? Was it, was it less ritualistic than what you were used to? Did you oh, sense yes. uh, freedom and, and uh, joy? Was it open? Did you sense a hunger to want to know more, or did that kind of grow inside? It is. It is uh, like if you uh, start counting the differences, yeah. they're like a million difference. Like you don't have to remove your shoes. That is the first difference I noted. You yeah. can go in with your shoes. There is no idol. Yeah. Like you're worshiping idol. Mm -hmm. There is no like bowing the head or you know. There's no faking. Right. It's a good way to put it. <laughs> and then. Uh, when the so we went we, I went behind that lady and when the pastor preached I could understand the pastor like he was speaking in English the language that I could understand yeah. so I was like this is so and I cried a lot mm -hmm. but then I made the connection actually pastor who was he was Jim Samra pastor Jim Samra is the lead pastor of the church and the lady was his wife oh, Lisa wow. Samra so well, she God brought me the that up didn't he the Lord knew what he was doing. That's so cool. And Lisa worked there for just two or three months. So God really put us together yes. somehow. Mm -hmm. So during that time, uh, it was Calvary Church. It was Ada Bible Church and many other churches in the town that just came together. And mm -hmm. I would say there were at least 100 Christians who helped me during my time wow. because I did not have any money. Like I was very scared. Mm. And for three months, Calvary Church paid all the utilities. Or, but that was like, I was like, church does not pay you. I was like, I have not even given a single dollar to you. Yeah. So you could <laughs> understand you're... their generosity and their love. And I'm sure that was such a witness to you in your coming to Christ. Yeah. And it, oh, it, it was like, at least for a year, I couldn't even understand why these people are helping me. Mm. So many times I just thought that, oh, there might be a malicious intent or something. <laughs> You're kind of like distrusting, right? Not really yeah. able to trust because of all the trauma that you'd experienced too. Yeah. yeah. Trust has been a big issue. They paid for, so they paid for my utilities. They paid for my moving. They paid for phone, like for three months until I found a job. Mm -hmm. They paid for everything. Wow. And they even helped me move. And so... I moved into an apartment and now there another lady from the Ada Bible Church, she was helping me like I used to live in a five bedroom mansion. I was very rich because I was married to a doctor. Mm. So from there, I was on like almost on streets like I had nothing to wow. like I was I, I did not even know that I will I have food for my daughter. So the Calvary Church even paid even give me the food for three months. So mm -hmm. there was a lady who came to my life and her name is Debbie Joe Schwartz. Her role is very big in my life. She, she brought people and people into my life and she would clean the house and she would, and she would even come on the weekend and say, okay, let's list the three things. So she is my godmother and mm -hmm. she even like gave away me to Zach. Oh, so <laughs> yeah, so. So, so now another thing that that was big thing that happened was uh, the, uh, that I this journey kept on for a year. Mm -hmm. uh, the wrinkle that happened was my ex husband did not allow my daughters to go to church. So, he, oh, yeah, he so found it out, and I was so scared of him. He did not allow it legally. It was like not allowed, and I did not have any. So. Another conflict that was going on in my mind is I still had, I was still holding on to the Hindu idols. Mm -hmm. So one day uh, there's a prayer program in our church where I went for prayers, for asking for prayers. Mm -hmm. And one lady just touched me on my cheek and I felt like my mother touched me because mm -hmm. my mother never touched me like that. Mm -hmm. So that day I made a decision. I gave away all the Hindu idols. So everything that I was holding and the 
president of our Hindu temple was so mad at me. <laughs> your your brain that. is just brainwashed. The Christians are just trying to <laughs> brainwash you. <laughs> so, so can I ask this? How did he find out? Did you stay in communication with your folks back in India? And they and this president got wind of what you had done. And he was no, it was like it was like I wanted to show a respect. I wanted mm -hmm. to do it in a respectful way sure. because he because Hindu idols means a lot for Hindus. Sure. So I wanted to say that I want to give away these things respectfully. Yeah. So can, can your temple take it? Mm. But he did not want it, yeah, maybe even give it away. Yeah. Unfortunately, I had to do it. I had to just pack up everything and put it outside the temple. I was, there was no choice left. Mm -hmm. And he found out because, you know, in Hinduism, there's a lot of like money involved. So there was silver idols. Mm. So for them, it is like, wow, why would this lady just give away all of these expensive things? And, mm -hmm. uh, but that day, my, the lot of burden just lifted. And wow. God. the last thing that was left was my baptism. Mm -hmm. And I asked God that God, you have done so many miracles in my life. I want you to let Kushi and Prisha, my daughters, come to the church. Mm -hmm. And I cannot even tell you how many people were praying for them, yeah. that the girls come to the church. Mm -hmm. One day I met a Christian attorney. He said, I do not know how it happened, but there is nowhere in your divorce decree that is mentioned that you cannot bring the girls to the church. Mm -hmm. That was another <laughs> miracle. <laughs> so he said, you can bring them to church, just yeah. inform him. Mm -hmm. He couldn't do anything. Yeah. And since that day, they have been coming to church and they love Christ. Praise God. That is so powerful. Goodness. Uh, you know, when, so there is a big Hindu uh, presence in uh, the United States, uh, specifically Grand Rapids, where you are. And you had had attend, attended temple before your connection to Calvary and uh, had stayed in touch with your past, uh, religious past, I should say. Are you still in touch with your folks? Did they, uh, they disowned you or how was that? Working? So they disowned me. Um, so the people, in, uh, people who are Hindus here, they disowned me just because my husband or my ex-husband at that uh, is divorcing me. So divorce is not acceptable. Right. Even and, though you had the right to because you've been unfaithful, that doesn't mean anything to them. No, it doesn't. It's always like, I knew that they knew that there were a lot of gossips that the, it is my fault. Like, so even if a husband goes and commit adultery, mm -hmm. it's my fault. Like oh, why unfair. the woman, um, she's not a good wife, you know, that's why he did it. So he made all these stories. She did not cook in the house. Wow. And so that's why I did it. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, you've, yeah. you've come a long way and, at this point in your life, and I wanted you to share just briefly, and we'll close in prayer and then have you and Zach on together, but you could, you could tell us a little bit about how you met him, if you could, but you, uh, this journey of healing uh, emotionally from all that abuse, uh, emotional abuse, physical abuse, do you still revisit that in your own flesh sometimes, maybe uh, have difficult dreams? How, and how far has the Lord taken you in that? I'm sure it's a lifetime of healing because that's, that's a, it is a lifetime of abuse that you've endured. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I know, we know the Lord is strong to take that away too. Uh, however he wants instantly or progressively. How is it? Been? He is. Yeah. He is very strong. So uh, just to let you know, I and my ex-husband, we knew each other for 20 years. Mm -hmm. So we did not date it the way dating happens in America, but we knew for 10 years, our marriage was for 10 years. Mm -hmm. He was my first love. It was very hard. First year was very hard, but I learned a lot about forgiveness mm -hmm. and I just forgave them. It was not only my husband, it was also my ex-in-laws. Mm -hmm. They treated me like worse than slaves. Wow. They would yell at me, shout at me. Mm -hmm. I took care of them, took care of my ex-husband. But it was like, 
I do not know from where God gave me the strength to just forgive them. Like that is what I used to say to everyone. Mm -hmm. I have forgiven them. Like wow. okay. in, in, it was, it, I forgave them. Um, and it was a choice that you knew you had to make if you were going to move on. Yeah. If you hadn't made the choice, you would have been stuck and bound to your past and probably would have affected you even more than, than and then maybe still has. But boy, your, your joy, your smile shows uh, the audience, myself tonight, how the Lord has really uh, relieved this from you and taken yeah. that burden from you. So how did you meet Zach? How did that happen? Yeah. So, uh, so the first year was hard. I was like, I hated men. I, because there was no oh. man. Mm -hmm. My brother beated me. My dad was not fair to me. Mm -hmm. uh, my husband treated me like that. So I was like, all men are. Then yeah. I read that passage of Genesis where it say, the first passage that I read that was really interesting was the man leaves his father and mother Mm -hmm. and joins the wife or joins i was like wow this is such a powerful passage if <laughs> if this passage is followed in india <laughs> so many marriages will become happy marriages yes, yes. So that is the problem that mm -hmm. uh, men do not leave their family mm -hmm. it's only the woman who is supposed to leave their family leave everything and move to the man's house mm -hmm. so i was like this is powerful but the second passage when i that really moved me was God created man. Mm. I was like, if God created man, God cannot be wrong. <laughs> then then I, <laughs> you know, you had your share of bad ones. <laughs> yeah. I was like, there has to be something yeah. nice about man. Somebody so can. then one day what happened was I was at my work. There was a very strong calling from God that uh, today go to church and attend Wednesday Bible study. I was like, this is crazy. What Bible women study? Okay, I will. I just followed it. I went there. Mm -hmm. I was um, I was very reluctant. I just was following the calling. I reached there like an hour before. Mm -hmm. I sat, sat there and there was a very old woman, like 70 years old, who was sitting there. I saw her. I met her. I shared her my story. She shared her story where I found out that she has been living single for like 36 years or something like that. So she got divorced at the same age as me, mm -hmm. but she never remarried. And that moment, it was very clear to me, this is what I don't want for my life. <laughs> no. yeah. Once that happened, I was, my mind was so calm, like my heart was so calm. It seems like the calling did what it was supposed to do. And then I was like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. And also my counselor never let, let it go. He was always nudging me a oh, nice person will come into your life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Yeah. So we met at match.com and uh -huh. uh, my, my, you uh, things were very, very like strong. I want a Christian man and he should be masters. He, sh he should love my daughters. And so like so many restrictions were there and people were like, you're crazy. There's no <laughs> man. <laughs> That's okay because you had had everything uh, without any restriction. I mean, you had, been, had the opposite of that. So I can't, I can't imagine you wouldn't have those kind of conditions because you want to make sure that you were going to be safe and whole and loved and your 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 daughters as well so well I, I hate to close off because this really does lead us into and maybe we can make a plan for uh let's see this september maybe uh in november i have some november openings uh, i know you guys are busy look at your schedule uh i think that there are three the last three weeks in november and we'll yeah. we'll get you both on here and hopefully by at that time amy won't have all all of the schoolwork she has to grade so uh, wow, this fabulous testimony. I hope that folks, if you've listened to Neha Hackman's testimony tonight, I guess I didn't realize that, that we had such a large Hindu presence here in the United States. I haven't really studied Hinduism like I wish I had, but I mean, what a, what a strict and oppressive religion, really, especially for women. Uh, and it's remarkable how that God just called you out. He saw a diamond in the rough in you. And he, he just pursued you like, what is it? C.S. Lewis talks about the hound of, of heaven, how that the Lord Jesus through the spirit of God pursues us because he loves us. And 
He brought you to himself. He brought you to America. And he brought you a, a wholeness and a, a brand new blended family and a husband who loves you to pieces. <laughs> so, all right. Well, let's pray. Okay. Yeah. All right, with everyone. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this dear lady. And uh, Neha, Lord, you, you just uh, worked in her life such an amazing work of grace. And you use the body of Christ in such a powerful way that to show her the love of Christ, which is the way it's supposed to be, Lord. Uh, all that she has been through, Lord, maybe, and already I'm sure there are some women who, whom she can help, who've been through similar circumstances as she has been, and who've been abused and neglected and beaten, Lord, even, uh, Lord, what a tremendous healing. Continue that healing process, Lord. I'm sure it's not over, but there are times that the days are dark and difficult, and the memories come up, Lord, and if there are any residual issues with regard to even any PTSD, because certainly uh, her experiences, I'm sure, uh, could allow for that, Lord, that it would be completely, completely healed, Lord. And thank you so much for what you've done. Open doors for sharing her story more as she has tonight. And I thank you for she and Zach and their children continue to bless their lives, making them a blessing to others uh, and open the doors of, of just being that blessing to other people, Father, in their lives and in their testimonies, how that you brought them together. Thank you so much for our time together in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's uh, let's return this. I will uh, shoot some dates to you uh, tomorrow morning. Probably I'll text a couple of the dates. You look, talk to uh, your loving husband, and and we'll uh, we'll chat again. Okay, sounds great. God Thank bless you. you. Say hi to Zach and the kids. Yes. Yeah, sure. Have a good evening.